I see a few. <laughs> namaste, everyone, and uh, namaste to all who are joining us on the screen. Very happy to see you. And uh, today uh, we have uh, been uh, very quiet here in Montessaja. For those of you who can see you on the screen, big welcome, big love to you all. And uh, happy that we can join together a little bit. We have a little time, maybe just under 20 minutes before midnight for those who have uh, uh, strong um, sense of ye new year and old year and so on. But for us here in Montessaja, just an opportunity to come together to see the, the year out, so to speak, or to welcome the new one in. But more important, I'm go I feel it would be good to, um, while well, during the break, I had a little look. And I felt I would like to read something from the Avaduta Gita. And uh, so I saw, I saw one or two verses that I thought you might really enjoy. So I marked them actually. <coughs> now, I don't know if all those who are joining on the broadcast, <coughs> um, if you have been really following our most recent guidance, and uh, which I'm so happy to uh, that we have come to that level of sharing, where the pointings have become so direct and so accessible, so immediate in their effect and the impact inside the heart. So if you have, then I would feel very happy to read a few lines that may resonate and should resonate with you. Uh, no. In the, in the Avaduta Gita, I saw one, another one, I can pick a few verses. He says, there is no such thing as separation or union for me or for you. For there is no me, no you, and no manifold world. All is the self and the one self alone. I know that this will resonate, must resonate with you. There's no such thing as union or separation. Why not? Because many people will say, yes, there's no separation. But what about union? So why does, why does the, the sage say there's no such thing as separation or union even? Or even union. So he's saying beyond separation and beyond union beyond separation and unity is what. And I feel those who have been following the guy, experiencing the outcome of the most recent guidance, such pointings should just flow in harmony with what you, with where you are. No? So I, I felt good enough to share that. And he says, there is no me, no you, no manifold world. Is that too much to say? Meaning, as we let go of all the, the phenomenal uh, representations that come in the mind, not destroy, not destroy, but simply to be detached from them. Leave everything, drop everything. And if you do it, even as I speak, because this is not a lecture, you see, immediate, as we speak, if you drop all these things, what remain? There will remain that which cannot be dropped or picked up. This is not a um, 
uh, a psychological painter. This is not uh, some kind of uh, koan. This is not some sort of intellectual uh, conviction. It is direct, directly relatable like that for you. Meaning you come to that emptiness. You discover that underlying emptiness in which everything that manifests through the mind and the senses are perceived and seen that they are transient. They are appearances that come and go. I'm looking at the Sangha who is sitting here in the Mandir. Yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, finally, in this verse, says, all is the self and the one self alone. Can you relate to this, you see? When we go upstairs into the mind and thought and yes and identity and so on, comes the big flourishing of the multitudes of thoughts and, and uh, contrasts and so on, which is fascinating for the earthly identity. But now you have been given or shown the, uh, given the ability, release your ability to see that all these are phenomenal and there should not be any argument about it because you have come to that by grace to see that, wait, yes, whatever appears inside the mind, uh, it's only, nothing is permanent there. Only that which is able to verify nothing is permanent there. That is permanence. You see, so... I, you're liking to hear that? Yes. Yeah, I hope same same for you. Let me see if I can find something else. Mm-hmm. If God is all pervading, immovable whole, without any parts, then there can be no division in him at all. How then could he be regarded as inside or outside, within or without? I'm going to go again. If God is all-pervading, the sage knows. He's not asking if. They will not say if. But because they speak to sometimes the doubting mind, says, and, and just to present, if God is all-pervading, immovable, whole, without any parts, meaning limitless, then there can be no division in that God at all. Yeah? Here we can use word God or you can use consciousness, supreme consciousness, because you cannot have an unconscious God. So. Uh, God is all-pervading. All-pervading consciousness is immovable, whole, without any parts. It, how long it will it take for you to confirm this? If you come and pay attention to that space within you. And is the space of the self, is it an object of perception? No, no. Even beyond object and subject. Are these words too advanced? It will not be if you follow. We are not been here. We're not in university, not in spiritual university. But just through that direct and practical guidance, full, fully revealing the, the natural state, you see. Mm. How then can God be regarded as within or without? Because if he's within, then, then he's probably not without. They say not only within or without, beyond within or without. Can you relate to that? The whole universe is shining as one reality, without any split or break or separate parts. I'm going to keep an eye on the time to say. The idea of maya, which is illusion, delusion, is itself the great delusion. You know, I am so uh, happy 
to be able to say these things without feeling I'm overwhelming the Sangha here with me. In fact, it becomes like a mirror that reflects your limitless joy and peace. Sangha here, Sangha, it makes no difference in it. So the whole universe is shining as one reality. You can continue saying the whole, all the universes collectively, on the physical and non-physical realms, same sentence, are shining as one reality, without any split or break or separate parts. The very idea of Maya is itself a great delusion. Duality and even non-duality are mere concepts of the mind. Come on, be happy with me. <laughs> you know, duality and non-duality are merely concepts. So we are not speaking about concepts. We may speak, yeah, they are concepts. But even the very pointing out is itself in indicating that which is beyond concepts beyond the interrelated concepts of duality and even and non-duality. Are you in joy with me about this? <laughs> My gosh. Okay. <laughs> Let me look and see now. You see? Let me do one more, see if I can find I think I made another mark somewhere here. Yeah. It, meaning the self, is not undivided, nor is it divided. You ought to be able to listen in the formless space, the limitless space of being. If I say that, do you have to go to imagination? Do you have to go to imagination? Imagination is of the mind. Again, mm. it is not divided, nor is it undivided. It experiences neither sorrow nor joy. Although sorrow or joy can be perceived mm, in the realm, through the realm of the mind and the body functioning, they are perceived. But it says here, it experiences neither sorrow nor joy, meaning that it's not, it, is not, it is not caught up in that. It is not the universe, nor is it not the universe. Is that too complex? Only way you can grasp this is be yourself the emptiness. Understand that the self is eternally one. You can use eternally one or timelessly one. Same. Eternally means um, unending time. Timeless means beyond time. And you who have been listening and following, and not just listening in the mind, but really verifying inside the heart being, hmm? How can you comprehend this? You're not holding anything. When you look in a mirror, you're not trying to capture the mirror, the image. It reflects perfectly. Understand that the self is eternally one. Only mm, when you are empty, Then, and your mind is not called into action to comprehend what is being said. Everything can flow unobstructed in the vastness of being. Because the beingness is not gaining anything nor losing anything. It's true or not, you see. 
you know what joy it is that these words can come off the page and can float inside your expanse. And you're not trying to enjoy. I feel like that. Not even trying to understand. Am I overrating you? Pardon? put this away for now. Why we can speak like that? And the speaking like that is not, it is that and it is beyond that. What kind of New Year sharing is this? Or New Year's Eve, we're still Eve, no? If this, uh oh, I'm misreading that clock. We have uh, 56, four minutes. <laughs> Are we going to make conclusion about the universe in four minutes? <laughs> we have plenty of time. I, I'm looking at the those of you who are joining on the screen. That this is not some psychological trick, it's not a joke. What joy it is to be able to share in a way that is very relatable and, and uh, I'm going to say experienceable, but it's not the correct word. Graspable, maybe. And not grasping to hold. But so, like a mirror, takes no time to reflect. This is the quality of heart consciousness. Before we are employing the mind and intellect to kind of grasp and to figure out something and to get somewhere, but all of this by grace and through the exercise and the pointings, that heavy garment of mental structure has been lifted by grace of you. Maybe not everybody can say that. I say it on your behalf. Because it's very important in a real living Sangha that it becomes a proof, not the proof to someone else, but a proof within you. So I'm very happy. What does it mean we are one and a half minute from you? It means nothing at all, actually. We have one and a half minute to go of the old year. These are concepts of the mind. And yet, at the same time, we can enjoy the concept. We can enjoy Happy New Year. We can do it. But we're not carried away. We're not crying tears. Oh, goodbye, last year. We're not in any of this. Because you are beginning to experience in the limitless space of being, which we all are, not just the Sangha is. In the reality, there's no Sangha. You see, I didn't plan to speak like this, but I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm talking and I'm looking on the screen to see these people dropping off. Uh, It is a great joy to be able to speak on these things without struggle, 
Why? Because you have been persisting with the simple guidance, the exercise. The exercise cannot produce the self. It only mm, <laughs> can you hear? Can you hear the bell? We have a bell ringing here. Maybe they should be able to to hear that. It's uh, Happy New Year. We say like that. If I have something more better than saying Happy New Year, it is to say uh, blessing to all to all the beings. But the blessing will particularly reach those whose whose hearts and mind are exuding the urge for awakening to the timeless. And these are not abstractions, they are not uh, fantasies, they are not the, the most recent um, concepts. It is just uh, pointing to the nakedness of the truth. That actually we don't have to become the truth. That's the common language in the world and like this. Uh, building up to. But more that uh, what is untrue is exposed and its power is cut. And that which is timelessly present and cannot be added on to or taken away from is revealed. That's it. I don't want to make any speech. I'm not a speech maker. But to to see and be in the presence of a Sangha that is able to comprehend directly through direct experience and to verify the truth of that in the heart brings great joy for me. And yes, Sometimes the mind and the old things will come up from time to time. And when it does, do not be disappointed. It's the dance of momentariness come. And we will, we will have to look sometime and steady yourself that you don't get pulled again into the shape of personhood and past and mere matter but that somehow it's okay. The mind and thought and feeling, sensation, sense of agitatedness can come, but it cannot carry off what is and what exists. Like the river cannot carry off uh, the ground that it flows over. Is it saying too much to say like that? Well, if it is, then we need to pay more attention and to continue being persistent. It is not that somehow there's some magic formula. It's not a magic formula. A mirror is not a magical thing. But as we come more and more to, to recognize how the mind and how delusions happen, we are being set free from their spell. So I just want to say blessing to all, to all who are joining us today and those who are not able to join like this, and bless you that your highest aspiration, your deepest urge, particularly for awakening, and that even the possibility, the idea has come to you that something called awakening is possible, is itself auspicious. But we go further to say, bless that this is fully, 
fully, fully um, resolved in you, in each one. And that you find that which time cannot conquer, death cannot conquer, mind cannot conquer like that. So I, 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 if it is not so already, then my blessing and my prayer is that it will not be long before these words find smooth resonance inside your heart, that you are able to confirm it is so. Not necessarily that you confirm to anybody out there, tell people, but you are confirmed in that realization. I could say more, but what I'm going to do, I feel a very beautiful start to New Year. Is can we sit for a few minutes together? Will you join us? Will you join us? Yeah. Be free. You can join or, or, or not. But uh Just to recap for those who perhaps are not familiar with what our, our most recent practices, is simple, simple thing. In guidance, it is very simple. To you are aware of uh, of the mind and the senses, and even the sense of being somebody. These are all created in the mind. So when I say, uh, leave all this for a moment, all that we talk, all that we can discuss. If I, in, I invite, leave this aside for a moment. Learn to drop everything for a moment. Don't throw it away. I don't ask to destroy. I don't ask to judge. I say, just leave it aside. We can all do that. Leave that aside. And continue, make a little more effort to leave everything. Aside. You will not lose anything of value. And in the emptiness that remain, we say, keep your being and your attention, even the natural sense of being, the sense that you exist, that I amness feeling inside. You're aware of that. Then just be conscious of that. And we do here in this simple exercise, we'll start just five minutes, we'll do. And in this five minutes, just to warm up, you can say like that. Just try and just hold, just be, just stay in the sense of being. And what we find is that by asking that, uh, uh, we begin to find, like sometimes the mind comes in again. And I say, don't fight. Just refuse to go with the mind flow. And just come back to stay empty. Each time it goes back, bring it back to the neutrality of being. This is a simple exercise we will do. But some will experience tremendous difficulty because you come to realize Mind has got a strong force. And when you choose to just be <coughs> free of its influence and to stay only empty, you feel the power of the mind. And you see that, wow, so this is the influence that my mind is stronger than my will to not go with it in the beginning. But very quickly, this change, this very day, what a beautiful way to, uh, let's say, start the new year, if you want to put it like that. We don't have to hold these sentiments here. Just another opportunity to sit. And I will make a start with the bell. We'll make a little bell. Then we'll sit for five minutes. After that, we'll stop and then we'll sit again. Each time, if you hear this sound, it simply means 
just in another way of saying, drop it. Drop the shapes, drop the thought, stay empty. That's what the sticks mean. So, thank you. Um, five minutes. Simply leave all concerns, all thoughts, have this intention, and leave them now, drop them. If you do this, even with the intention, a space of emptiness naturally remain. Be conscious of this emptiness, nothing more. Nothing to develop or change or become. Simply remain conscious, awake, empty. No need to ask your mind to cooperate. Discover what it is simply to be. Not the act of being. Not the verb of being, but the noun of being, the isness of being. Thank you. For some of you, if you feel, if your, your attempt is to stay empty, you may also experience some sensation like going into sleep. This you cut. Just remain conscious and uh, empty. And it doesn't matter if it feels difficult. Expect that in the beginning. Don't take shape.
Boom. That was just to get uh, settled. Relax. So for you, you can just shake out. No big deal. Okay, we are going in now for ten. Ten minutes for those who join. You're very welcome to you. Mm. Boom. If you choose to remain empty, though in the beginning mind will fight to get its way, know that it longs to be one with the being. So your resolve stay only in the emptiness. There's no failure. The failures don't count. It's okay. So each time we feel we are back in the mind field, it's okay. No, no fight. Simply come back. This is the training. Come back to emptiness. Simple. Refuse everything mind will offer you. Not now. No identity. No plans. No creating. Pure being. Be aware of mind, but don't get involved. Stay as awareness. 
like unlimited space, clean, clear. Be that space. timeless shapeless Be only awareness without content. No imagination. No self portrait. Beingness has no habit. Clear. Stay empty. Feel the pull of the mind, but remain empty. 
like vast space. Do not imagine space. Very good. Very good. Can you take fifteen? Pay no attention to mind habits. Stay as the self. Shapeless. Don't get trapped by sleep. Clear. Stay without identity.
no sleeping. Just be. Mind struggles to get the food of your attention. Stay empty. Allow mind to come to heart. No words, no identity.
Don't drop the head. Remain aware. Yet empty. No sleeping. Keep straight. Awake. Without content. No thought is important here. Leave all. Clear awareness.
a week. Very good. Very good. You can feel the resistance when we try to keep attention only in beingness. Feels very unfamiliar with the when the intention is to hold the attention in beingness. You begin to feel the power of the habit of the mind. and see that unchecked you are the slave of mind this is changing you see because actually the mind need to be in harmony with being and this is the direct way not discussion the direct way holding the attention and you see how much fight I see some people it's like fight good fight best fight because gradually although you might feel that it's you know sometimes maybe feel impossible like the mind is winning it doesn't matter what matters is you persist the results are coming are growing in you maybe you don't see them yet after you begin to feel the power of just holding the attention and beingness it will grow more and more powerful becomes natural also then the mind can enjoy the being mind is not enjoying the being mind is enjoying bad habit and suffering bad habit this simple exercise Five minutes. We'll finish five minutes. Eyes open. Eyes open. Five minutes, and we'll close for today. Beautiful start to New Year. If you want to use this type of thing, what better way? Set the set the pace like that. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. If someone want to come a bit more forward, you can come. No, don't stand in front camera. If you feel, if you're fine where you are, stay. If you want to come, you can come a little bit, but not in front of this line for me. No. Okay. Om.
for our awareness itself, it will make no difference, eyes open, eyes closed. Very important. Same space. Awareness is not behind or in front. It's all pervading. Eyes empty, <coughs> eyes empty. Seeing and being are one. <coughs> Often, mind will not initially enjoy this exercise. It doesn't matter. Later. Now the pulse of thinking are dropping.
you are not eyes open. You are the awareness of eyes open. Eyes open, eyes closed, no change in awareness. Be aware of this. Offer no entertainment to the mind in this exercise. Be aware without shopping. Now, even though we have been doing this exercise for a while, you still watch the mind is not happy in the beginning because it wants food. And food is your identity and attention. But this is how the beingness gets covered up. It's as though the mind is holding the beingness hostage. But we are unaware of it. 
And when it doesn't get, I'm not turning mine into the a gangster. It's just force of habit. When it doesn't get the food, then it's like spoiled child. It's rebelling, and it takes form sleep. You feel it? Sometimes sleep. This is mind. So the support come, no, stay empty, awake, aware, empty. Training the mind to merge in heart consciousness, heart being. It will not do it by itself. So don't give too much importance to the initial resistance that come. It will come. And the mind energy will feel very annoyed and irritable and fidgety because it's not getting, it's like a drug. You follow? It's like a drug, uh, like an addiction. But you never thought you addicted. This is how the addiction work. You never thought you addicted. Until now you're told, keep your attention only in being. Actually, we are being. And the root of being, that's what is. That's reality. But it's eclipsed or veiled by the activity of mind. And how mind carries, how mind gets such a power? By, by taking the I. I means consciousness. But mind uh, takes the I and make I person. And we forget. So this is the power of this exercise. All your therapies cannot compare with this exercise. All the readings, all the other things, all any kind of mental gymnastics, any it does not compare. Because this, just like you cannot learn meditation from a book, you cannot learn to swim from the internet. You cannot discover uh, and be yourself by just thinking about it. Simple exercise, bringing attention here, holding. And you feel the pull. You could just have woken up after eight hours sleep. But you sit and you, what is this baby? Not true sleep. Then all kinds of thoughts and irritableness, itchiness. But I say, don't worry about those. Be aware of them. But don't log into their energy. And you'll find with practice, you're more able to stay out, isn't it? Then you can taste the fruit of your own being. And eventually, mind also is very happy to be home. This is home of the mind, is the beingness also. But left unchecked, he just roams about. And you pay the price of that. All addictions come from this. All delusion, all confusion, all sorrows, all frustrations, all fatigue, all hatred, 
restlessness, envy. All darkness come from this. The mind force unchecked. Now you are doing the most powerful thing. Then also, I gave this prayer also. Because sometimes we do exercise and then for a while it's so powerful, it's beautiful. You sit for half an hour, it's as though you're flowing for three, four, five, six hours of just grace. Then gradually mind come. But mind cannot disturb the real being. It comes and it brings up the person again. This will gradually go. So I added to it this prayer. For those who can feel that, you can, universal consciousness, God, you ask, please, whatever message or the force of conditioning that is binding my uh, soul or binding me and producing negative effects unrecognized, you offer this prayer, please delete, dissolve, arrest this tendency. This is prayer, you see. And you keep doing. And the consciousness, universal consciousness, God consciousness, will now start to reveal and show you where those patterns are happening. And when you see them, consciously you offer them to the light. That this, I offer this. This is power. Because your connection with God is an interactive relationship. It's not that you post. It's not a post-it. It's not, oh, I put my appeal and leave it. No, if you are serious as you are about anything that you want, you will persist, you put attention. No matter how much you seem to fail, you persist and you break through. And this same persistence is here. But unlike anything else, this is releasing you from time, from the prison of time and personhood. This is breaking the chain. This is breaking the, the, taking you off the wheel of samsara. So that you live as being and not person becoming the beingness. And you will experience that for yourself. You will know in instinctively, intuitively, that uh, you're in the height of your own being. More and more you do. It's good. Could we have had a better start to New Year? Hmm? Yes, very good. Best. You see? Better than well wishes, <laughs> gifts, money, party, drink. <laughs> Better than any of these things, because all these things are food for mind. You have done the best, sit. And take out the torment out of your mind. So that you're not a prisoner of mind and habit. So, very good. Thank you. Thank you all. Friends, Sangha, who chose to join us for today, most delighted to have you present together in this. This collective, you know, sitting is uh, support each other in this. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Very good. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Same, same. Same, same. Mm.
this satsang in honor of our beloved Dashana and Ma Swaran. Yes? Thank you. If you keep in, uh, in the core of your being this intention, this life for freedom. You know? Not next week, uh, start next week, next month. Life, your life is here now, always here now. Always here now. Nobody lives tomorrow, for tomorrow, next week, last week, yesterday. It's always in the now. Consciousness, now. It's now. Now, not as a moment of time, but as the timeless awareness in that nowness. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.